Allora, Manoi Giuneca, Giuneggia e Lucia Votano sul palco con me. Benvenuto. Grazie. Professoressa, piacere di vederti. Gli organizzatori mi hanno obbligato a sedermi, sapete che non lo faccio volentieri, ma dicono che ormai comincio ad avere una certa età. Allora, potremmo scegliere di fare questo panel in italiano, perché Manoi parla un meraviglioso romano, poi se faccio sentire, <ride> romano perfetto. Potremmo scegliere di farlo in cinese, perché la professoressa adesso sta in Cina. Per complicarci la vita abbiamo scelto di farlo in inglese, perché per, per cortesia verso il nostro ospite che preferisce rispondere in inglese sui suoi temi. So, let's start in English. Uh, you have been leading uh, Grand Sasso, the laboratory for many years. The first woman to lead, yes, so such an achievement. And now you move to China. So uh, Parakan has been ta talking about th I mean th the importance of the Asian uh, countries. Now China is taking the leadership uh, in the scientific side. That's amazing because they've been the country of like uh, agriculture, then low cost manufacturing, and now artificial intelligence. What's going on? Uh, the, the microphone, oh Lucia. Sorry, uh, I have a few slides. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, in a sense uh, I Uh, have my personal uh, silk way <laughs> to to China. Yeah, you can also since look there. Uh, I, uh, sorry. Uh, since I f I start my scientific activity in uh, Frascati, then I was in CERN, Geneva, in Hamburg, in uh, Gran Sasso, and uh, here you mm, see some my picture. Not because I want to see me, <laughs> but uh, because I'm uh, near one of the big experiment of the Gran Sasso laboratory is the Opera experiment. This experiment uh, uh, is uh, uh, given uh, the first direct uh, uh, proof of the uh, phenomenon of the neutrino oscillations. Yeah. For whom are not familiar, uh, neutrino are the building block of the universe and also of our uh, uh, body, and uh, are very intriguing and uh, very popular in the universe uh, uh, particles. Okay. The, we can definitely say that there is not any tunnel no. networking uh, Grand Sasso and uh, Geneva. Yes. Yeah, as as <laughs> the minister once yes. stated. Okay. <laughs> there is not any tunnel. No. Okay. Yes. It was a fake news. No, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, was a beam, uh, that uh, neutrino beam starting from Geneva and reaching the Gran Sasso laboratory. Yeah. So, but uh, the reason why I want to mention this experiment is to give the first message of my talk. Well, in the opera experiment, uh, uh, more uh, billion and billion of neutrino pass through this experiment, and in more or less five years of activity, we registered of the order of 20,000 uh, uh, neutrino event. In between uh, these 20,000 event, we found 10 events of neutrino oscillated. They started as a neutrino muon of uh, type muon. They, during the, the, the travel from Geneva to Gran Sasso, they transformed itself in uh, um, tau neutrino. Okay. But why I mention this? Because right. in order to find these uh, five, uh, uh, ten uh, uh, events uh, over 20,000, we used uh, some techniques, uh, data analysis, that are typical of the artificial intelligence. Yeah. Uh, not only that, the message that I want to, to, to give you is that these uh, uh, techniques that we use in Gran Sasso are largely used in uh, CERN, in the experiment in CERN, uh, in the LHC experiment, it was, uh, uh, were uh, invented, in a sense, in the fundamental research. So artificial intelligence is supporting the scientific research? Also. Yes, absolutely. So This is the first message, that sometimes the progress, the human progress, uh, is uh, adiabatic, as we say, is um, okay, linear, but sometimes we need uh, special uh, events that completely uh, transform our uh, level of the knowledge. 
it was like that for uh, for instance uh, we, we we give obviously give the the uh, the example of the electromagnetic waves for instance but also if you think there are uh, two fundamental theory in this moment the general relativity and the mechanical yes. quantistic uh, uh, physical uh, quantistic that are very far from uh, normal <laughs> form of life, but uh, without this, uh, no uh, modern electronics, no GPS would, would uh, work. So the first message that I want to give is that uh, without uh, fundamental basic research, there is no jump in our knowledge. The, the true jump are coming from uh, basic uh, science. Then, uh, uh, that's why is the, the, the because oh. my l experiment... Uh, so you when, when you ended your career in Italy, you decided to... You were, were you have yes, the, been the, the last, uh, before that I was, uh, okay, I also was the director of Gansasso, but I worked in this experiment. Um, uh, now is uh, about uh, four or five years that I'm working on this experiment in China. Okay. Uh, you what, what is Juno? Juno, uh, Juno is uh, an acronym, is uh, Jung Man Underground Neutrino Observatory. This is the uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, we are more or less 600 people. Uh, mm, uh, yes, 77 institutions. But uh, what I want to uh, underline uh, is that the cost of this experiment of the order of 300 million uh, dollars or euros is more or less the same. The 95% of this cost is covered by the National Academy, Chinese National Academy mm. of Science. 95. 95%. Yes. So, the, as a collaboration, the Chinese are only 60%. The other are coming from Europe, States, uh, North America, and other Asian uh, countries. But the, the cost... So is, is China is a, a superpower when we talk about uh, science? Uh? Science and fundamental, basic science. So please, so this is the, you can see the, the site. Uh, you see Juno. Why in uh, this site? Because... Uh, this is an, uh, again a neutrino experiment. We need a source of a neutrino, obviously. And uh, uh, in the south of China, there are uh, building a new power plant, nuclear power plant, that are sources of anti neutrino. And then we are using this, uh, we will use this uh, neutrino. But the main reason is also because uh, the China is offering this. Uh, big opportunity to the neutrino how to community. How is to make a scientific research in China in comparison to what you did in Geneva or in, in Italy? Ma, there are Th not there so is any difference, just the same. There are not so big difference. There are no big difference. It's an international team or you're just the only foreign uh, scientist? No, no. There are, uh, uh, you maybe you... Would uh, yeah, I haven't seen the, the slide. Uh, yeah, you can, you, can, you, okay. you can answer. There are, uh, I said that 60% uh, are Chinese, Six, 60, yes. 60, yes, a lot, a lot. while the other one, uh, are uh, European, some are from the States, uh, other uh, Asian uh, countries. Uh, Why do you think they're investing so much in scientific research and inter artificial intelligence? Uh, yes, I want to show some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some numbers because data are important. This is the uh, distribution of uh, investment in uh, research and development. Uh, the data are the 2017, but are more or less the same. You can see that in Asia, the Asia invests the 43% of the 2,000 uh, billion dollars spent in a year in research and development. The North America, that means uh, USA and Canada, is 20 28%. Mm. Europe, 20, 21%. So... Uh, and China is minding the gap with, uh, closing the gap with the United States. Yes, I, I, then I have also mm, more specific data. But what I want to underline is the fact that only 100 years ago, the Europe had the monopoly of the science. knowledge, <laughs> not only <laughs> of the science, of the knowledge, of uh, all the knowledge, all no. the science. Now it's completely different. And in 100 years, now we are uh, at the yeah. third. It's a more open and complex world, yes. definitely. And if you see the, the investment, the amount of investment, you see 
that the China invests for around 50 mi 100 million, it is very near to the investment of uh, USA. Yeah, it's 1.26, it's our yes. little Italy. Yes. So this is the uh, base. Uh, th very depressing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if. That's it? <laughs> With the presentation? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Just uh, the my conclusions. Your conclusion. The message Bottom that line. I want to, to transmit. So we, we all know that uh, we are living in the era of the knowledge of the science. Uh, and uh, what uh, I mean, uh, uh, my the message is that I, I my first uh, uh, contact with the Asia are um, around uh, the beginning of the 90s. Okay. So I had uh, the opportunity to. Uh, to note, to, 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 uh, to see how the uh, Asia, in particular not only Japan, but also China, invest a lot of uh, uh, funds in uh, uh, instruction, uh, in uh, research. So the message that I would like to, 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 to transmit is the fact that the science... Uh you know, now the Italian government is preparing the budget law, the most important law that we approve every year about budget. So probably S it's important to put more resources on, on the scientific no, Not research. only that, but uh, what I should say, it, it, the, the, the reason, the true reason why China is now the second uh, economy and uh, also from the point of view of po politics uh, in, uh, in, the, in the world, uh, is because uh, it's the second scientific power country. And the science, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, anticipate <laughs> what <laughs> are the, the, the political and economic uh, changes. So, uh, and the other, as I say, is the importance of the basic science. And at the end, uh, I would like uh, just to say that uh, I, I would say in Italian, because maybe it's more uh, uh, important that uh, we need uh, more uh, yeah. conoscenza, perché, mm, diciamo, maggiore sviluppo della cultura e della scienza significa non soltanto poter entrare di diritto nella società della conoscenza non significa solo sviluppo economico, ma forse non so se ne avremo tempo ne parleremo, ma diffusione di diritti e valori universali, che è anche un, un importante concetto. E allora, caso me ne parliamo dopo, eh, Giuneca, Giuneggia, Giuneggia, sorry. <laughs> you are a CFO of the World Food Program and the Executive Director, and so working in Roma since... Uh, but been living in Rome for al almost all your life. Yes, for a long time, because yeah. before the World Food Program, I was actually at the Food and Agriculture Organization. Yeah, and uh, talking about f hunger, food, and uh, you think, w do we have any chance to, to, to match the sustainability goal, goal, goal development of the United Nations? Well, that's very much the business of the... Uh, the number one, it's about hunger, I think. The num number two is about um, hunger. No, number, number one, one is, is poverty, 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 that's right, and yeah. number two is, uh, is hunger, and uh, that's very much the business of the uh, World Food Program. Uh, we are a member of the United Nations uh, family. Uh, the World Food Program operates in 83 countries with 18,000 employees, and our goal is to contribute to the elimination of uh, hunger. Uh, we operate uh, in uh, many, many difficult situations because we are the largest humanitarian uh, organization in the world, but we also not just save lives, but we also help change lives. Now, on your question, uh, we have at, at present 822 million people who are undernourished. In other words, they don't get enough energy intake in their, in their diets. And unfortunately, I have to say that uh, the uh, numbers have started to reverse. Really? Yes. 15 years ago, we were at about 947 million uh, hungry. The numbers had declined until but about the four situation years is ago. getting worse. We had declined. We'd, me we'd made good progress until about four years ago, uh, where we'd fallen to about 785 million hungry, but now we've risen to 800. How do you explain that? What's the reason? Well, conflict is one of the reasons yeah. for uh, the uh, challenges that, uh, that we're facing. And in fact, the World Food Program is, is operating in uh, many conflict uh, environments. Yeah, so World Food Program is, is a very important humanitarian organization, but 
can be perceived like something bureaucratic. Instead, you have an approach, uh, your organization has an approach uh, which, which puts uh, innovation and technology, like in the engine, like a, a drive for... for, for Yes, that's right. You know, the World Food Program has uh, evolved very significantly. The business model has changed tremendously. In the, uh, in the days, m many years ago, we used to uh, basically provide trucks of food uh, and, and transport them for very poor people so that they could be, they could be fed. Uh, in the last 10 years, that has changed very dramatically, and we've moved from food aid to food assistance. And uh, the sorts of things that we're now doing is, uh, for example, providing cash to beneficiaries, uh, cash to vulnerable people, instead of uh, providing food. So let's talk about this, because uh, I think that it's a very good story, a very important story, because it's we are talking about blockchain, which is, in my opinion, a, a, an overhyped technology, because it's been around for 10 years, but nobody really knew what's wha what's what is there for. And you found it, the World Food Program found or a very important application for bl blockchain. Yes, that's right. Blockchain is one of the technologies that uh, we've used. Uh, we're, we're very much uh, part of the uh, digital revolution, the uh, communications revolution. And if we take uh, blockchain as an example, it, it really first starts with the culture of an organization. You said uh, World Food Program <coughs> is, is bureaucratic. We're, of course, part of a bureaucracy, but the culture of the organization is one of innovation and risk-taking. We also have a structure that uh, promotes innovation in Munich. It's called the Innovation so Accelerator. An innovation hub, it's an, like a kind of an accelerator yes, for a technology it's program. It's, it's an accelerator, that's right. Yeah. We have sprint programs there where good ideas are taken to the Innovation Accelerator. We how, do you how do you support the projects here? Where if, if someone applies to, to the Munich ac Accelerator? That's well, right. So they apply. We, we try and check the viability of uh, the project. It's potential for scale-up as well. And then uh, we provide funding, $100,000 per project, and we support Free of equity. Project. So you're not, you're not... Free of equity. equity. Okay. That's right. And then over a period of six months, we, uh, we support it with best practices, uh, human-centered development and agile development as well. And blockchain is one of the... Yeah, I want to go back to this blockchain project yeah. because it's uh, been deployed at, be at the beginning in Pakistan as in a pilot project, and then and now it's in uh, Jordan. That's right. How so is it going to? How is it working? So that's right. This blockchain project started in through the uh, innovation accelerator. It's uh, in Jordan. We have 100,000 refugees, Syrian refugees in Jordan, who basically can go to a supermarket, and they can go without a wallet, without any cash, without any cards. They can purchase the food that they uh, that they want, and when they come to the cash till, all they need to do is show their eyes. They go through an iris scan, and the iris scan recognizes them, and it basically transfers the data onto the blockchain and records their transaction because they are verified beneficiaries, uh, the, the registered people. Uh, it uh, verifies them. They take their food away, and that this transaction is immutably recorded, and there's the transaction can be viewed in future by the benefit. That's amazing. In, in a country where we cannot use the credit cards because the deposit <laughs> never works, it's amazing. But we heard that from Donato. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, why do we need this? But why do they? Do you need this technology? I mean, why do, do you need to to have this kind of technology in the, the refugees camp? Because why not just to give them food? Well, uh, firstly, to give them uh, the, the, the choice uh, of uh, and the dignity of not physically giving them food uh, or not even handing them, them cash, uh, there's a lot of dignity. Uh, in, in any case, this kind of a model allows the local economy to, to grow because we're getting the food locally. You, yeah, the, but the then there's, there's a, a, an efficiency saving in the transaction as well. We cut 98% of bank costs. So they do the need to have a credit, a credit card, a bank account, nothing. nothing. They just go and they, nothing. with their iris scan, Yes, we've done $64 million of blockchain uh, transfers and we've saved 98% of uh, banking costs in, nice. th in that process. And the transaction <coughs> is accurate. We can, we can uh, verify the beneficiary. And as I said, the transaction is immutably there. It's an amazing story. I think there is another story we cannot share. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the latest uh, Mobile World Congress in Barcelona Yes. World Food Program has been awarded for a special app. Yes, indeed. We uh, received uh, an award uh, for a mobile uh, Maybe app. Maybe we can show the video. That there is a video great. also. Yes, thank you. One in seven children does not have enough food to lead a healthy and active life. But what does it take to end global hunger? It costs 50 cents to feed one hungry child 
for one full day. The Share the Meal app enabled you to share your meal with children in need. All it takes is 50 cents and a tap on your smartphone whenever you want, wherever you are. The United Nations World Food Program provides the meals. We show you where the children are and how we are progressing. Now picture this. Smartphone users outnumber hungry children by 20 to 1. Imagine the impact you and your friends can have. Together we can end global hunger. We share the meal. Will you? Try share the meal today. So, so I just... <laughs> I give you I give you the number it's just a big, it's just been updated 45 million meals shared supported by 1.5 million users it's a lot that's right so this uh, it's so easy to use it's, it's very easy to use this uh, mobile app uh, is is regarded as uh, always amongst the uh, uh, highest performing uh, apps in uh, Google and in How many stars? Store. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> totally five stars. And it, it, it won this award that you referred to in, uh, in Barcelona. $20 million transferred in this way. Again, it's, it's a digitized way for a, a humanitarian organization like ours that is 100% voluntary funded to rely on individual contributions. So technology and innovation for a good cause, very important cause. That's very much That's so. what you're doing, very that's good. That's right. So one final question for you both. And uh, I think that uh, the, the, the person of the year is, is going to be Greta Thunberg. She's really changing something important. For your side, the most important slogan she says is, let's unite behind scientists. I think it's so powerful in a world of fake news, uh, anti-science uh, campaigns, to say, let's unite behind science. How do you feel? It's making a difference? Uh, for sure, the, the, the science make can make the difference, for sure. But the, the, the Greta Thunberg uh, campaign, do you feel more support yes, or I not? Mean, I think it's uh, uh, a, an impressive, uh, how you say, uh, a phenomenon, mediatic med <laughs> media <laughs> phenomenon. But since uh, the, the message that uh, she gives us uh, is uh, essential because uh, climate change are uh, real, are not fake news. And uh, uh, scientists <laughs> say <laughs> this uh, very mm, strongly. So I, I think that uh, as a scientist, as all the science, have to learn how to better uh, communicate. Yeah, because, uh, it's very important. I mean, uh, the, the message, uh, what I, s very briefly I said uh, today, the importance of science, how the science anticipate the, 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 the economic and the political uh, uh, globalization. Hey, but uh, remain a bit between <laughs> us. <is> not uh, <laughs> does we we. Do you think that science, uh, science and scientists in Italy are just in the corner, not in the the main most important room? No, what do you mean? The the, the the they're not driving the agenda. No, no. Not definitely not. No, no, no. No way. No way because uh, I mean I have to register. We have to register. Unfortunately, that. Uh, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, bad uh, records in the numbers yeah. of investment, in the numbers of uh, graduates, uh, in the numbers of researchers, and so what. So that means that our message doesn't arrive. Okay, so from the Capri, Capri stage, is like an, an appeal. Let's let's try to change this uh, this long trend. And to you also, the, the world that Greta is talking about is something that is supporting your your daily challenge to, to abolish the hunger? The, the World Food Program sees the consequences of, uh, of climate change. And uh, we see droughts, we see floods. Uh, uh, agricultural production gets affected even by small changes in, uh, in temperature. We have to be guided by, by science. But it's also equally important to uh, be able to win the hearts and minds of, of people, uh, to be able to create advocacy and I think Donato talked about the, uh, the current generation. And I think in that sense, what the current generation is doing is helping that advocacy and helping change hearts and minds and create greater political will. Allora, grazie, grazie a Manoi Giuneggia. Grazie a Lucia Votano. Mettiamo pagina, grazie tante, grazie. Grazie. Grazie, davvero due bellissime storie.